Well, howdy there, Internet people. Let's bow again. So today we're going to talk about Denmark. And we're going to talk about Denmark stepping up and filling a position uh, as world leader while the United States fails to uh, take on that role, is incapable or unwilling of taking on that role right now. So we have talked, in fact, we talked about it this morning over on the other channel. Right now in Ukraine, there's a shortage of a lot of stuff along the front lines. And you have a situation in the United States where the Republican Party doesn't want to support American allies because it's good for the Republican Party politically for U.S. allies to lose. That's the situation. You can church this up any way you want to, but the reality is the dysfunction in the House is based on political math. They want the United States to lose. That's the reality. And they want that because they feel that a weak America is good for them politically. So, Republicans in the House are blocking aid to Ukraine. Other U.S. allies are uh, stepping up, though. And Denmark is, is leading. One of the things that Ukraine is in desperate need of is ammunition. You know, from the beginning, I don't need a ride. I need ammunition. And that situation still persists. This is uh, the Danish leader. They are asking us for ammunition now, artillery now. From the Danish side, we decided to donate our entire artillery. I'm sorry to say, friends, there are still ammunition in stock in Europe. This is not a question about production because we have weapons, we have ammunition, we have air defense that we don't have to use ourselves at the moment that we should deliver to Ukraine. Basically, Denmark is uh, taking everything except the absolute bare minimum and shipping it. You have people, as soon as this news broke, sending messages, isn't this a bad move? Isn't it going to leave them defenseless? Against who? Against who? For those countries in Europe, um, when all of this stuff was produced, what country was it produced to fight? When it was designed, what was it uh, designed to counter? Go look at specs. When you look at the Leopard or the Challenger, when you look at the various pieces of equipment, and you look at those original design specs, what you will find out is that it was all designed to counter Russian or Soviet equipment. When this stuff was built, it had an address on it where it was going to be sent eventually. The concern is that if the equipment is shipped to Ukraine, when Russia inevitably attacks NATO, this is, this is the perception. Uh, I would like to point out, I don't actually think that Russia any time in the next couple of years, is going to directly attack NATO. Um, but that's the perception. Those people who want to keep this equipment in reserve, they feel that if they ship it to Ukraine when Russia inevitably attacks NATO, well, then they'll be defenseless. That's, that's the logic behind it. The thing is, Russia's involved in a war, and they're going to stay involved in a war as long as they have to fight which means they're not going to make a move on NATO because they're tied up. The equipment keeps them tied up. The equipment reduces their equipment. It, it's one of those things where it seems like there are some brilliant strategic minds saying, you know what, <laughs> let's, let's not send this equipment to Ukraine 
and let the Ukrainians use it and fight there. Let's wait for them to lose and fight here in our country. Have the devastation that you see in the footage occur in our country. Let's wait for it to happen here instead. Denmark is not falling prey to that. Denmark is going to ship everything they've got to help get uh, Ukraine back in the fight as the United States fails to advance for domestic political reasons. Um, so that's what's going on. No, I do not think it's a bad idea for Denmark to do this. Uh, I think it's a good idea. I think there are a lot of other countries in Europe, NATO members, that should follow their lead. And remember that the threat that, that you want to keep this stuff in reserve for to counter is the threat that's being actively engaged. I, that's an important piece of this conversation that keeps getting missed. For countries like, you know, Australia or the United States or Canada, there is a little bit of a difference because there are there is a possibility of another front opening up. But even that's just tiny. For countries in Europe, as far as defending the territory at home, the threat is actively moving your way. By your perception, your strategy, your doctrine, the threat is moving your way. By keeping this stuff in reserve, you are loudly proclaiming, I would rather fight it here. I would rather my civilians deal with the consequences. I feel like that's a mistake. I think Denmark's right. Anyway, it's just a thought. Y'all have a good day.